reason that we're doing this series is because, you know, the, the, the industry is in this real period of change. And so we really wanted to check in with the leaders of the industry and, and, and hear from them sort of what their perspective is on how the landscape is shifting and where the fault lines are, where the growth is, and just how, um, you know, you, you sort of feel like there is a period of, of sort of widespread anxiety in the movie industry and whether that you feel that's warranted or how you analyze it from your perspective. So th the first thing I would just ask you is, um, you know, do you agree that <laughs> with that, with that well, general know, perspective? I'm not willing to concede that the sky is falling. Um, I just don't feel like it is. And I feel like the um, box office always expands with people's desire to see movies. And I think many, you know, I think you wrote an article um, a couple of years ago, maybe five years ago, um, about how the industry, you know, movie business was over and box office was down and nobody was going to the movies. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's not a very original thought, but of mine now, uh, that it's just a cool business and that it sometimes it expands and, you know, for the movies. And I think that the other thing I think that's interesting that you're seeing this summer is some of the movies that people are jumping to the conclusion that they haven't worked, like How to Train Your Dragon and, you know, the, I think it's the $43 million opening. And that movie's done fantastically well. That movie is a huge hit. And all over the world. And I think it's got a fantastic multiple because it was a good movie. And I think good movies are working. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to be buoyed by that. We need to be, that needs to be a great thing, that a good movie can do a good multiple. So you're saying it can't come out of the gate and it's not encouraging the news I think, I think there's a rush to judgment mm -hmm. um, that we're all responsible for, you know, not just the press, all of us, because we all feel like we're under such a microscope these days. And I think there's a rush to judgment from all of us. Oh, that, you know, you know, whether we're being competitive with the other studios or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I think everybody's saying, this one worked, this one didn't, this one didn't, you know, Robin Hood's a disaster. Robin Hood's done 300 million mm dollars. -hmm. To me, that's a disaster, you know? Well, but the cost of movies have been, have been yeah, but it's still traditionally going. too high. Yes, but yes. Yes. Too high. Yes, the cost of movies are too high. The cost of all movies are too high. But what I mean is, is that we create our own reality sometimes. You know, we all decide that something worked or didn't work. You know, sometimes I get the matinee figures at 9 a.m. on Friday, mm -hmm. and I myself am guilty of saying, oh, my God, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Five theaters in New York. Five theaters in New York. You know, um... And it's just not always the case. It's just not always representative of what's going to happen. Do you believe in something called the Twitter effect, which was, I think I was the first person to write about that last summer? Do you think it exists? That, that when something gets to be one of the main topics on Twitter? And that it, affect, that it impacts the box office because people are talking about it either, you know, for better or worse, that they're saying go I see think, it or I not. think that... Um, Social networking in general has changed word of mouth. I think word of mouth used to be what you told your friends, and you couldn't tell as many friends verbally as you can across the Internet. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea of friends has changed, for one thing, and so <laughs> that the idea that how many people you're telling has changed and how many people those people are telling has changed, and it becomes an exponential word of mouth thing. It used to be you called up and you go, this movie is really bad, or this uh -huh. movie is great. You have to go see it. Now you're saying it to an insane amount of people. How do you deal with that as somebody who's trying to shape? Well, I try to make good movies, so they say good. good <laughs> that would be that would be our first thing. Uh -huh. You can't, you know, all you could do is make a good movie and market it as honestly as you can, and you can't tell people how to feel about it after that. And if the movie's good, you hope that those things are going to help you. And for sure, when the movie is not, they are not going to help you. Um, I'll take an example of somebody else's movie. 
Um, you know, we said, we wrote a story as Sex in the City Open that said it was review proof. The reviews right. were very bad on that movie. And people went out to see it anyway. So right. I applaud the notion of making good movies. That's the goal. But always the goal. It's always the goal. It's good to reaffirm that from somebody who makes movies because it's not, it's not always apparent for those of us who go to the movies that that's what everybody's trying to do. But to be fair to all of us, excuse me, nobody sets out to make a crappy movie. Nobody says, you know what, let's make this one bad. You're always trying to make it good. Now, sometimes you succeed in making it good. Sometimes you really succeed in making it great. Sometimes you massively fail and make a bad movie. Right, which happens, but you still have to sell. But you still have to sell. Right. But it wasn't because you thought, oh, this one doesn't have to work. Right. right. No, I understand that. But so now, given the social networking and that exponential factor that you're talking about, how do you deal with that? Now, if you have a good movie, it helps you because yes. it expands that well, word of mouth exponentially. Yeah. I mean, if you have a movie, and I'm not saying anything about anybody else's movies, not, not Sex in the City or anyone's okay. movies, mm -hmm. But if you have a movie that isn't uh, uh, word of mouth proof, yeah. which I think matters just as much as reviews these days, that that is a change. Um, the, the fact that word of I, mouth. I think is word of mouth is you know you trust what your friends say about the entertainment experience probably as much as you do about what any given newspaper or periodical says. You know because those people know you, they know what you'll like. They like the same thing. You don't know the other people who, who are telling you it's good or bad. That's sort of a judgment you can decide you believe or not. It's your friends you believe. So do you spend less time thinking about critics and reviews than you did before? I, to be honest, Steve would kill me. I try never to think about them. <laughs> I just, if you think about critics, um, then you're going to second guess yourself. And you can't do that because if you second guess yourself, um, you won't do anything that is authentic because you won't be able to hear what you're thinking. So, if you make something that's good and you and and it's going to get critical acclaim, I think that's fantastic and that can help you. But anytime you ever set out to do that, I'm not sure that's the way to achieve it. 